Okay. Uh, is it on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me start with explaining you the two notions. I will go over the the theorem over and over with giving each time more details. So what is a concordance? So suppose I have two closed manifolds y and z. Y has dimension n minus one. Z has dimension n plus k minus one. I would assume that k is greater or equal than two because the co-dimension two is the most important. And I have two maps I zero from N one to and I one. So the concordance between the two maps, so this is Z cross zero, Z cross one. So here is the, so the concordance is uh, a map from n equal n cross zero one to omega equal z cross zero one, such that it restricts to uh, i zero at the level fit zero and i one and, um, uh, and i one at the level fit one. I, throughout the talk, I will assume, I might assume that the concordance is singular in the sense that this map is no, not necessarily uh, an immersion, uh, an embedding, it is an immersion by what I mean that the derivative of the, the rank of the derivative at each point is, uh, uh, or is a um, has trivial kernel. Uh, but if I have ma many components of Y, I will assume that the, these components do not intersect. So I allow self for I, I, I allow for self intersection of the component of components of Y of uh, of the image, but I don't allow intersection of, of different components. So this is concordance. What is regular homotopy? If I have two maps I one from uh, Y to Z and I zero from I to Z, then the regular homotopy is a family of maps Y I tau from uh, Y to Z, which are all immersions. And I, Z, I tau for tau equals zero is I zero and I tau for tau equal one is one. So this is like regular homotopy. And then there's a question whether concordance implies regular homotopy. It was answered, uh, for codimension three or more by Heftiger, for codimension two in case of n equals one uh, in 1990s. Uh, the statement as such was stated in Peter Teichner's habilitation thesis in 1995, but uh, the proof uh, never appeared in print. And there are some results uh, rec quite recent for the case n equals two, I think it's 2018. Uh, so the aim of the talk is to sketch you the proof and show you the difference of sort of how to think of the uh, of that proof in this uh, setting. So suppose I have uh, an immersion like this. It gives me a map G from. Uh, let me just say what I wanted to say. Uh, Z of X tau is Y tau is Y tau of X. Okay, so I have two maps, they look similarly, but there is there are some differences. So I will try to explain you the more theoretical parts. So in this setting, if I consider a function f from omega, we call that omega is z cross one to zero one. And f from uh, mm, n to zero one f equal f z. 
then I have like after perturbing these necessary, I have a more fine state. And here, if I consider again the projection to zero one and f coming from n to let me call this to prime um, to zero one and f uh prime equal f composed with g prime then this projection this is a, this is a family and the fact that it is uh, it is a regular homotopy trans translates into the fact that this has no critical point so i have one more function which might have critical points so my concordance can be like very complicated and i have one so one projection that is uh uh, that has no critical point. Can I can I change the project? Can I change the function f? Can I change the the isotopy? Uh, sorry, the immersion g in such a way that I cancel both critical points. So to do that, I will consider instead of more functions on the submanifold, I will consider more functions on the manifold on the ambient manifold omega. And for that purpose, I have to introduce the notion of a of an immersed more function. So let me give you a definition. So for those of you that don't know what an immersed, what a morph function is, and a morph function is an immersed morph function in the absence of an immersed submanifold. Okay, so suppose I have n to lattice uh, to omega. I will define n to be the image. M of D is the set of decoupled points. So the set of points which that have uh, whose pre-image under uh, under G has precisely D precisely D points. So it is so this gives me if you know what it is, it's good. If you don't know, don't, don't worry, this is just a word. Uh, this gives me a stratification of omega. So I have the top stratum, which is M. Sorry? Is an immersion, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This immersion, yes. So I have m zero, and then you go down to. So I have a function. So I declare that f from omega to zero one to be a function uh, to be a most to be an immersed most function if the following holds. First, f restricted to m. D has only Morse type singularities, which means a Morse type singularity is like P in F and D is a singular point. Uh, sorry. So if I have a singular point, then Is not the general. So, okay, so this is the first condition. So I want the function to have critical points at each stratum, which is quite natural. I want the critical the function to have critical points at each stratum being non degenerate. And the second condition is that F, so you can show that the closure of the stratum, so the set of points with Kramer at least consists of at least the element. Is uh, well, mm -hmm. it's not a manifold, but f restricted to this. So as the function of this this stratum has fit only at so no no critical point at deeper strata. Let me show you an example why it is important. And it is important what, what is happening, and it is important to separate the behavior of the function f at different at different levels, on different depth levels. So let me give you an example for the second part, which is an example for the immersed for the so I have a torus, which is omega, 
So my theory will, so in the background, my, I will remember that omega is the product, but the immersive mode theory is developed for uh, general manifolds, not necessarily products. And I have, uh, of course, the, the function is the heat function. And I have immersed, I have an embedded circle. And here, this is a point where the, the second condition is violated. So this circle gives me the first stratum. And my original function, original most function has critical point at this stratum, which is something I would like to avoid. And how do I avoid it? Well, I tilt the circle slightly. And now this is a critical point of the function, of the hate function at the first stratum. And this is the critical point of the hate function at zero stratum, yes? No, it's not a manifold, yes, but. Yes, but, well, formally you should do this. You should take the D plus first stratum or D plus, this D plus first stratum then you have branches, then you have D plus one branches to the point because it's an immersion. So we have a D plus one branches. So you take any D branches out of this, you restrict, so you do, you, then you have a manifold, they intersect transversely and you re require the function to be, not to have a critical point at this. Yes, or you, well, it's not exactly the considering on the pre-image. So for example, if you have a map uh, on the pre-image, you might not see the critical point of depth at depth two. So if you have a map, I don't know, if I show you the map like this, okay? So this is an immersion, but the depth, but, and this is a, the, a single point of the, of the second stratum. So if you have a function like a function, then it has three critical points, this, this, and this is necessarily a critical point at the second stratum because the derivative is trivial. The, the, it is only one point, this is, this is a critical point at the second stratum. But as this is a critical point on the second stratum, well, you don't see it pre-image. On the pre-image, the pre-images are not critical points. So this is actually an important property, well, I will not give you a proof that more functions exist. If you are familiar with that uh, multi-jet transversality theorem, then you can say, show that the set of more functions is uh, actually open dense in the topology of more functions. Anyway, so suppose I have this, uh, this map, so I have like, now I return to this F to zero one, and I have two maps. Like one is G coming from the concordance from N cross zero one to omega. Zero one, and I have G prime. To, from n cross zero one to omega zero one and I have f and what I know that I have here small letter f equal f which has no critical points and here I have f prime equal f tensor g prime and now my condition that f prime is Sorry, this has, can have critical points. Sorry, I switched up. This is, this might have many critical points. And this function, I know that it has no critical points because it, it comes from regular homotopy. And this amounts to saying that my capital function F has no critical points at that zero. So on the zero stratum, because it is a projection of omega, it's a standard, it's a just regular function. 
and it does not have critical points on the first strata. Though it is allowed, as with the example that I just erased with this example, it is allowed to have critical points at depth two or more. In general, during the talk, I will not take much care of critical points at higher depth because they determine how does the, the they tell me about the geometry of double point, but they don't tell me about the uh, the topology of uh, of the manifold. So index one and index zero. So what is the strategy of proving that concordance implies regular homotopy? So this is a strategy that I have two Morse functions on M and by CERF theory, which I will recall in a while. So now I, my strategy is to give you more and more detailed description of the proof and returning back to the proof. So I will tell you what CERF theory is in a while. I can connect this function, this family of functions by a path of functions where I allow only for births, death, and rearrangements. So there is a path a tau of functions. This is not necessarily a path of functions. Uh, 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 path of what functions, but it's a path of functions with mildly patho only mildly pathological behavior, uh, connecting these two functions. Sorry, this is F tau going from N to uh, this is from N01, yes. Uh, pro sorry, I uh, I was using notation N for the product, and now I should I just say N, yes. So sorry about that. Uh, N to zero one. Yes, there was another question. Uh, well, regular homotopy. So this, I will say to phrase it in a different way. Regular homotopy. So a map is a regular homotopy. So the G prime is a regular homotopy if and only if the function F, so at least maybe if the function F has no critical points at index zero and one. And if you have critical points as, as in this picture, yes? Or even let's see this picture. Okay, so we have a map from a two point space. You have a regular homotopy between two maps of a two point space into a segment. Yes, this is like literal picture. Then the function has no critical points, so you have no birth or, or death because birth would increase or decrease the number of points. But this is a double point. And if you have a single double point, then it's necessarily a critical point. It is both birth, death, and whatever. Mm. Or you can even, or if you don't, if you feel not, don't feel confident with this example, you can see you have two circles. You have a regular homotopy of two circles. They intersect, but this point here you create double points. So on the second level, on the se second stratum, you have. You create critical points and then you destroy. So you definitely have some uh, some critical points at index two. They are un unavoidable, but they don't matter if you want to prove regular homotopy. So give it, so there is a path, and I have this function. And let me say that uh, what is the path? This is the this is uh, uh, this is a good function. Yes. Yeah? So. This is something that I know that there is so oh, zero uh, this. Oh, please. Let me also say where we are. G is given. G prime is being okay. So G is given. So we can say it differently. We have uh, now a path of functions with some behavior, and we know that F.
composed with this year. And now there is a question. Can we lift a path of more spines? So this is a concept of path lifting. I have a path of functions on N connecting my original function F, which might have critical points because it comes from concordance. And I would like to lift it to a path of functions on the ambient manifold omega, which ends up with a function such that does not have critical points on depth at depth zero and one. So I would like to start with a path, starting with a path downstairs on the ambient on the submanifold and lift the path to a function. Maybe I need to introduce, uh, maybe I need to change the embedding G as well. So there is a question of path lifting properties, whether I can whether or not I can lift a path of functions. Well, of course I can lift a path just take arbitrary anything what I can do perturb to be a part of pretty regular functions, but then I will create critical points at index zero. That's for sure. And I would like to avoid it. Even if I cancel them later on, it's not what I want to have. I need to control the path. So before I state the main theorem, like the main technical theorem, I will give you some counterexamples. Where can I work? I cannot leave a path of functions without behavior that is undesired. So there will be two and a half counterexamples. Uh, two counterexamples that are serious, and one counterexample that we can get get away with, which is the most important. And this we are most likely that we can get away. So what is the first example? So my manifold N is a union of two circles. My manifold omega is R2. And I have a function, I have an embedding of two circles, which gives me a Morse function. Okay, of course, the Morse function, whenever I, whenever I draw pictures, is uh, mm, the Morse function uh, is the K function. And I have a, in, an induced Morse function on, the, on two circles. Now I have a, now I can create, change this function by decreasing it here by constant value, which means that I would like this function to have minima uh, to be very small, and this is very large. Like the the, minimum, the maximum here and the minimum here is the maximum. The minimum here is greater than the maximum here. So if I would like to do it in the lifting, I would should change the uh, should change the embedding in such a way that this circle goes below that circle. That would be the path lifting. Yes, it's always the case. Yes, it's, it's the case. But I cannot do that because I would have to cross the. So the reason I will explain to you the reason is path lifting is hard in two dimension one. So this is the reason. The main reason is that this is the two dimension one. I will explain to you that later after introducing the new notion. So let me just give you another counterexample, which is almost the same, but not the same. I will draw you the, the top here. And the situation is the same. I have an induced function. I would like to decrease the function so that this, the, the minimum of this uh, goes below. Uh, uh, the, the minimum of this goes uh, below, uh, the maximum of this goes below the minimum of that. I would have to make a crossing. I told you I don't allow crossings uh, uh, between different components. So this is impossible. So what is the reason? I would like rearrange a, a pair of critical points. Yes? No, but I told you that I don't allow for crossings between different components of N, okay? This is because this is what in higher dimensional link theory is what is important. Don't allow for crossings. Uh, so what is happening here is that the critical point of index one goes 
below the critical point, point of index zero, which is not standard. I call it a dirty rearrangement, and this was a problem known already by Sir uh, in his paper. So, well, so we are arranging. All right, let's say moving higher or the higher index increase below lower x is problematic. And the third example is a bit more abstract. I'll try to draw a picture. It will take me a while. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, this is the Stevedore's knot. Uh, and uh, the Stevedore's knot bounds a disk in a slice knot, it bounds a disk in D4, and you can see this disk in the movie. So the movie starts with two circles, which grow, which, which, are, which then get increased, they get, get tangled, so they are still two circles, and then they are connected by a by one candle. So in other words, the disk for the stevedore, the, the slice disk for a stevedore knot uh, bounds, uh, admits a Morse function with two minima and one saddle point. Now, of course, if you have a Morse function with two points, two minima and one saddle point, abstractly, without referring to any embedding, you can definitely cancel this pair. Well, it just, it's, it's just standard. Uh, so, to simplify and get a Morse function with precisely one minimal, the one you love. But you cannot do that ambiently. You cannot do that ambiently because if you could, the, the only knot that bounds a disk admitting a Morse function with precisely one minimum and no saddle points is the is a trigger knot. That's also an exercise. Which means that there are obstructions for the cancellation in codimension two, which are the most uh, I would say they are the most uh, annoying because these abstractions are exactly what you would like to avoid. And then the statement of the theorem is that, of the path lifting theorem is that the two, the first two abstractions are serious and the third abstraction can be avoided at the expense of introducing self intersections. So you can decrease the Number you can cancel a pair of critical points in the immersed case, provided that you pay a price, and the price is increasing the number of self intersections. But the self intersections will occur only within the same compound. So the main statement is that here. But theorem as well so is the path of regular functions. I will explain to you what is regular, but Regular means that the only things that happen, that can happen on the path are births, rearrangements, and deaths. So I will go to that, come to that later. Functions such that no, um, I would say no, I would call it dirty rearrangement. There is a French word for that, but I don't remember it. Dirty rearrangement occurs, uh, occur on the file. And a dirty rearrangement is when the a critical point of higher index goes below the critical point of lower index. This is one. Assume G0 from N to omega is an immersion. 
and at zero from from n to zero one is immersed morse such that f zero is equal f zero is the composition yeah so this is like the i have the list the, the, the original function if k greater than one so if the codimension is not one there exists a f tau d tau dimensions such that and now i should say i shouldn't say that f tau composed with d tau is exactly f tau why like what is the most interesting for us is <clears throat> a part of well immersion regular part of functions Such that I would say first, like the first level of statement is that the endpoint is the same. If actually, you can say if you that f tau is homotopic to f tau uh, composed with d tau to regular to regular functions. So you don't. So you whenever you have a that rearrangement of birth here, you have a birth that rearrangement here, and they are the, the same. I don't want to make it precise. F tau has no birth that's on the zero stratum. And now G tau is an immersion, except if the co dimension K is at least three. And G zero is an embedding, then G tau then then G tau is an embedding, which recovers the proof that concordance implies uh, isotopy in codimension three. Because I don't create double points. Whenever I have double points, I have to create new double points. And uh, okay, so far and uh, what is more to be said is. Uh, uh, well, this from this theorem, the uh, the original theorem concordance implies regular homotopy in follows, except for one little piece that we have assumed that there are no dirty arrangements. But Serf proved already in 1970 that if you have two functions, two Morse functions, uh, and for both functions, no critical point of higher index have lower value than critical point of lower index, then they can be connected by a regular path at which no dirty arrangements occur. Okay, so this is the, the statement that I would like to, before I give you the, the idea of the proof, I have to introduce uh, one more piece of, uh, one more tool for studying such fun functions and explaining again this these of fractions, and this is called green vector fields. So GRIM is an acronym for gradient like immerse. And it turns out to be a very tech, very convenient tool to study embeddings and immersions. So normally if you have a Morse function and you want to perform some sort of some sort of multiplications, you look at gradient of the function and look at the vector is connecting the, the endpoints. Uh, gradient is a little bit too technical because gradient is uh, depends on the metric. If you want to change the function, uh, it's quite quite not natural to modify slightly the function. If you modify slightly the function, then the gradient can be modified very much. And you would like to perturb sometimes the vector field. So instead of using gradient, you use a gradient-like vector field, which is Essentially, a gradient like vector field is a gradient vector field for some metric, which is which you can prove if you know the statement. It's pretty easy. So, psi, so if you have a function f on eta to 
zero one, then gradient vector field eta is a gradient ve like is a vector field eta such that it is uh, uh, positive. Uh, the derivative is positive. The equality is only at critical points. And you have some conditions on the local behavior of the of eta near each critical point, which means that they have they have non-dimensional linear part. Or at best, you assume that they have like a standard uh, standard linear part, that they are linear in some coordinates. So we would like to have like an analog for that for a function f from omega to zero one. And then what you would like to have? You would like to have that d psi f is greater or equal to than zero, except at, crit at critical points. And for that purpose, if I say critical point of f, I mean a critical point of f or of f restricted to some stratum, which means that a critical point of the, on the first stratum is still a critical point of f, even if technically it is a critical point of f restricted to the stratum. So this is the d psi f greater than zero. I would like to control the behavior, the, this vector field to control the behavior of each strata, which means that I would like psi to be tangent to each of the M of D. This is like a standard. And then I would like to impose some uh, local conditions as best linear. Yes, to each of the strata, yes, each of the strata. And then I would like to impose local conditions. And if I think of local conditions, then, uh, and I would like for the, the local to like the, the vector field to be linear, then I quickly get to the conclusion that these three conditions are self contradictory, which is a bit uh, mm. more, uh, a bit disappointing, but actually it, is, uh, it gives us uh, more, I would like to keep these pictures, uh, more information. So I would give you the local local behavior. So if I have a point P in omega, which is a critical point, P belongs to M of D, so the depth D stratum, then I have local coordinates. Local coordinates are X1, XR, Y1, Y1D, uh, y one uh, k sorry one k y d one y d k so these are my local coordinates with r plus d k equal dimension of omega and these coordinates are given in such a way that the vanishing of these coordinates gives you the stratum so y i one equal Sorry? Oh. X1 up to XR, 1, 1 to 1K, D1, DK. So you have D, which is the number of strata, the number of branches that intersect, D, D pairs of coordinates, and each, bra each branch is given by vanishing of these coordinates. So these are like coordinates on the stratum, on the D stratum. And these are coordinates on the branches. So is branch. So on a picture, so if you have an intersection like this, then this will be the x coordinates. This will be the y one y one one coordinate, and this will be y two one coordinate. Okay, I cannot draw pictures in more more dimensions than three. I'm sorry. Uh, so then what is the, what are the, what is the formula for the, so in local coordinates, we impose the condition on minus x h, h is the index, so the, these are the local coordinates of the, so far, so good. So this is like the local coordinates you have for the standard gradient vector field, but these are the x coordinates. Now there are y coordinates, and there will come a surprise. Well, if you know the paper of Sharpe from 1988, which is uh, who is a differential geometer, 
who so the, uh, who did it first, then it is not a surprise to you. But... Who I were he. Okay, let me leave it because it deserves to be linked up. So what I have, uh, maybe I should draw it more. So what is this? This is like a standard coordinate standard. And then there is a sum of square of the y one i coordinate, so the coordinates defining the first branch at the y y one one position. Then at the y i y y two one position is at sum of square of coordinates. And you assume that your that in local coordinates your function is in these coordinates. So you assume so for each Morse function, you can choose this, you can choose coordinates such that the function has this property, and you impose that the a green vector field has these coordinates whenever uh, in some has this form in some coordinates in which f is of that form. Uh, so this is a bit more subtle because normally you are you assume that you have like non-degeneracy non condition, but the green vector field its local form is uh, infinitely degenerate so they the space of four, four of vector fields in any reasonable space of vector fields the space of green vector fields is of codimension infinity so this is a problem you don't you cannot use the genericity another problem is that you cannot like unlike gradient like vector fields you can if you have a family the like uh, convex com combination of two green vector fields is not necessarily a green vector field. You cannot achieve that, but it has fantastic properties with respect to the dynamics. So what is the dynamics? The dynamics is about stable and unstable manifold. So if you have a vector field, like gradient vector field, or gradient like vector field, then being linear means you have a stable manifold and an unstable manifold. The stable manifold is defined as the set where of points that eventually hit the critical point, and the stable unstable manifold is a set of points that eventually hit the critical point in the infinite past. So what is the what is the analogy of that? And this is the the analogy of that is called a membrane. Well, we cannot use like a st stable or stable center theorem for manifold theorem uh, for green vector fields because of the degeneracy. De so we use. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, so descending membrane. And ascending, descending membrane is the analog of the stable manifold. And it is given by equations locally given by equations h r equals zero so you have to zero all the coordinates that are repulsive well if you want to hit the critical point you must not have anything at coordinates y to one y at high at this at the coordinates where the, these are zeros so y i j equals zero if if j is greater than one, and the second, the third condition is that well, you you look at these coordinates. This is always positive. So if you want to to reach zero, you have to, you better start with something that's negative. So y one i is less equal than zero for all. Uh, uh, sorry, it is uh, I might have. Uh, mixed up the indices. So if j equals zero, so y i one, which means that this stable and unstable manual, this uh, descending membrane and the ascending membrane, uh, 
is the same, but and x one x r you have to have you have to a x actually so the ascending and descending membranes are given by local coordinates. What's more important is the structure of this object. The structure of this object is that they are manifoldly corners. You have a subspace, you have a subset on the in the x coordinate, it looks like the same way. So you have the ascending sphere and the descending sphere. And whenever you go to one stratum higher, you cap, you take a cone of that over that sphere. So we will have a manifold with corners. And then for that, per and then you, you can study the dynamics and uh, and obstructions for rearrangement and cancellations. So I will show you how it works in a, in a moment over, over here. Maybe I can show you this on that, on that picture. Sorry? Uh, they are, they hanging out on a branch. So they are like, they stay, you, you have, they are, okay, let me give you an example here, okay? Or maybe I will start with that example first. So I have a stable, a critical point of index zero. So no matter what I choose, the ascending membrane, the vector field, the, the ascending membrane is this. My vector field is tangent to, to this. So everything that go that hits here has to eventually descend. And there is like a one piece of uh, mm, uh, of descending membrane over here. And for example, that point has this. This looks like that. Of course, here the log this this shape depends on uh, depends on the exact choice of the gradient vector of the green vector. In this picture, I have the membrane. The ascending membrane here. It is like it is. A, it looks. I, I, the, the word membrane is very nice. It was invented by uh, Peron and uh, Rurke in the seventies. They used this terminology without uh, invoking vector fields. Uh, so, uh, but it is like you have the stable manifold, and you tie a membrane on this. On the stable manifold, if the uh, if the if the number of branches is the, the depth, so the number of branches is greater than one, then the picture is a bit more complicated. But you can easily imagine what it is. So let me now state classical theorems of mm, classical theorems of uh, from Morse theory. So if if I have two critical points, P and P prime, and there are no critical points in between, and this unstable manifold of P is disjoint from the stable manifold of P prime, if the unstable manifold of P is disjoint. From the table manifold of P prime, then there exists a family of of functions that lives to the critical point P above the critical point P prime without creating the critical point. So this is the famous uh, Milner rearrangement theorem. You can lift the critical point from here to that. Uh, so this is uh, this is the theorem for standard case, and the proof in the immersed case is the same, provided you replace the stable manifold and unstable manifold by the requirement that the mem the descending and the ascending membranes be disjoint, which exactly tells you why you cannot do that in here, 
because there's no matter how what gradient what green vector field you chose, these two membranes will intersect. You cannot perform the rearrangement. You you can you could have done this in the abstract way because you were lucky, but you cannot guarantee this the same condition for, for here. This is the abstraction. And in here, you also have abstraction. You can normally rearrange at the two critical points of the same index. Uh, uh, in uh, in the abstract situation, but in codimension one, the dimension counting argument fails. So if you play carefully with the dimension counting argument and transversality, you will see that two critical points of the same index can have a trajectory between them, like that is an intersection of membranes is a trajectory on the zero stratum, even though you impose a more smooth condition, any reasonable more smooth condition. So this is the reason why I said rearranging is problematic. So this is, so provided you have these two assumptions, the, the, the proof is the same and rearrangement is possible in of the critical points of the same index is possible if the dimensions of these two without any price to pay. Well, mm, for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is about cancellation? So the cancellation is the following. I have two critical points of the of indices P and P prime, of indices P has index H, H plus one. And I assume that my vector field is more snail, it means that the stable and stable manifold intersect. Uh, intersect at a single point, or uh, sorry, intersect, uh, intersect transversely. If there is a precisely one trajectory, then uh, if there is precisely one trajectory, then you can cancel the pair of critical points. And the standard problem in low dimensional topology is that sometimes you cannot cancel pair of critical can, You have algebraically uh, canceling pairs and non algebraically and uh, geometrically non canceling. So, what happens? With the theorem, well, if you replace stable, if you replace the statement by saying there is precisely one trajectory between two critical points, and this trajectory is at the lowest stratum possible, and these two critical points are, are on the same stratum, then the cancel cancellation is possible. The proof is not much harder than the proof of Milner, uh, the Milner proof. Well saying that uh, the proof is not much harder than 20 pages proof is a bit of a deal, but... Mm. Sorry? Uh, well, the dimension restriction is somewhere else. The dimension restriction restriction comes from the fact that you have algebraically in intersection index one, but geometrically not. And here the, here the, the situation is different. You have one trajectory you suppose you know that you have one trajectory on the uh, on the submanifold, but you might have other trajectories on the uh, going in the zero stratum. So here is the example. So suppose I am below the critical level set of zero and the, and above the critical level set uh, below the critical level set of one and above the level set of zero. So the membrane, so the stable manifold. Of the of the vector field is everything that is uh, <coughs> uh, is is the is the other two circles yes because the the stable manifold is just one just a circle the membrane is tight is spanned by the circle so the membrane is something like this for one circle and the picture for the other circle is. The same. So these are membranes. So the, the, the exact shape depends on the choice of vector field, but geometrically, this is the conceptual picture. And I have here the stable manifold of the critical point of index zero, and I have to connect it by the by an arc, which is which will be the descending membrane. 
and they intersect. And they intersect, which means that I might have a single trajectory con con connecting a critical point of index zero and index one on the first stratum, but there will be an extra trajectory of the critical point between the two critical points that goes to the zero stratum. And this is obstruction for cancellation. I cannot cancel, and of course, I cannot cancel this critical point. This explains how to, why I cannot cancel. And now there, there is a prize. I choose a path on the membrane connecting this intersection to that point. And I perform a regular homotopy, which essentially, which at this level set is like a finger move along this line. I leave this homotopy up. I leave this homotopy up above the level set and I, turn, I go back. I have created a bunch of critical points. It will be a sphere. But then I can prove that I can decrease the number of trajectories on the zeroth level, which means that if I have like five trajectories connecting the critical point of index zero and the index one, after five times of finger moves, I have on, I have no trajectories at index of, at depth zero. The proof that I can perform the finger move, this picture is pretty convincing, but uh, probably most of you have already seen pictorial proofs of smooth planetary four, uh, working out the detailed sequence basis. Because you want to prove that you, ex you actually change the vector field, you don't spoil anything else, you don't create new trajectories, you, you work out the, you explicitly write down the new vector field, new green vector field, et cetera. It is, it is like, anyway, after you pay the price, you can cancel critical points in index two. The price being the, uh, being as that. So to sum up, if I want to, Prove the path lifting theorem. I connect the two critical the, 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 the two paths by the two points. Uh, I split the path into parts where I have burst, where two critical points appear, which is the easiest. When I have rearrangement, where I, one critical point goes up and down, and one burst, when I have deaths. And then what I can prove is that uh, I can lift each of this piece of the path separately by using rearrangement or cancellation theorem at each time, which, well, some details are swiped under the right because, uh, because there are plenty details that I didn't have time to explain, but that's the end of the proof. And as the final, final word, I forgot to say that it's a joint paper with uh, Mark Powell and Peter Teichner. Uh, and the second part is that what are the applications, except for the applications of the theorem itself, well, if you use green vector fields carefully, you can, for example, reprove the rising water principle in much more generality. So the handle the composition of the of an immersed manifold induces a handle the composition of the manifold. But you see much more because you see that each critical point of the function of the immersed manifold corresponds to two critical points on the boundary of its complement, not one. But the second one doesn't matter, doesn't contribute. Using this, you can prove, you can get like something that is, I was told that is important in uh, clear theory that you can show an explicit way of some isomorphism. So if you have a, an embedded manifold, you choose, you have a Morse, Morse complex for that. Uh, you have a Morse complex for computing relative homology of the disk bundle model or the sphere bundle. And you can show an explicit isomorphism on the uh, between the handle the be, between the Morse complex of the submanifold and the Morse the relative Morse complex. There is like explicit isomorphism, with explicit comparison of differentials. Not just that the differentials are the same, but they are like the trajectories are the same. And as the third application, it is here. Uh, you can you can show that there is a new definition of the linking index of the linking number, which is like funny application, which is the count of trajectories between the two critical points, with signed count of trajectories between the two critical points at the zero stratum. This 
can be forged into a new definition, independent definition of the linking index. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Any questions? Well, the co-dimension of the fiction is co-dimension. No, 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 no. The, the dimension is the dimension is uh, uh, the dimension can be arbitrary, so it works in any dimension. Because I already know that my critical points can be cancelled ambiently, so I know that there is a vector field with precisely one trajectory. I somehow push this. I didn't have time to explain that, and maybe. It's good that I didn't have the time to explain that. Uh, I push this vector field from the submanifold to the manifold, and I use the same vector field to cancel. And I know that there is one critical, that there is, uh, there is one trajectory on the first stratum. What I don't know is that this trajectory is on the on higher strata, on, on zero stratum. Any other questions? Okay, before the group picture, let's thank my chain one more time.